Perfect. All right. Unfortunate. Let's get you back in the Fire in the hole. Alright, so this is around the time where we should be, or not right now, or probably earlier than this, is where we should be looking to go on a off angle. So, um, an off angle is just taking a different angle from your team, where the kind of the main angle that your team is looking at. So that'd just be down this main choke point. Um, I'd probably say that instead of just going down the, trying to shoot down this main choke point where we have shields blocking our LOS, tanks in the front, uh, we don't very, have very easy damage. We could instead look to jump up high ground here, right? From here, we have the option to um, peek left side, get off a of dynamite, try to get a pick or two. And then mm -hmm. if that doesn't, nothing comes from that, then we have the option to peek uh, kind of through the window here. That If that doesn't do anything, then we always have the option to drop back down main. But we probably should be looking to do something more than just sitting main spamming as shields. Um so whenever they had now if they didn't have any shields at all maybe that option becomes a little bit different but usually when they have shields it's going to be a good option to look to go on off angles um not just sit and spam a shields the whole time that way we can actually get around and actually do stuff whereas here we're just having we're struggling to do anything at all because um we just have so much in our face it's blocking us mm -hmm. So this is this is where we should probably just be looking to yeah do exactly this. Yeah. It just it should have been earlier in the fight. Okay. And very nice dynamite. Probably no need to drop there, um, mm -hmm. because you weren't being contested yet. Um, high ground usage is going to give you a ton of advantages, so we want to look to keep that a, as long as possible, right? We have very good visibility from high grounds and a lot of different angles that we can take. Um, high grounds give you a lot of survivability, right? If we're sitting up here on the high ground. Um, yeah, they can all shoot at us, but none of them can really get to us besides the maybe like Baptiste or the Junkrat if he mines up to us. Um, so it takes them a long while to run around. So it takes some time to get to us. High, all high ground next is natural cover um, as we can always back away from the ledge. And then now we're putting them out of our line of sight. Um, it, not so much with this one because it's very skinny here, but you know you can kind of get that example from here, right? They see us, we back up away. And now they can't see us. Right, so we can use the high ground to negate damage, and then um, the, the the really high ground's really good for those three purposes. So probably look to stay at that position much longer. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, there's not a lot of time in this game that you want to be spending AFK. There's a lot of stuff that we can do in the meantime while we're just waiting here. Like, mm -hmm. we could be looking to push forwards and do what our Genji is doing and try to take high ground from them. I'd probably say that would be one of the more efficient things that we could be doing here. Um, taking high ground gives us all the advantages that we talked about before, and it also denies them from having the advantage if we're taking it from them. Um, now, the other thing we can do is just you know make sure you're reloading in between fights. Just take a look at your ammo. Oh, we did, we actually did reload at some point here, but we were sitting at 11 out of 12 for a while. Um, those are the two main things. We can also do things such as look at ultimates on our on the enemy team, ultimates on our team. We can press tab, take a look at did any buddy swap characters um we just want to be doing more than just afk because there's really not much time where you can be afk and overwatch if you're trying to be efficient mm. 
Sorry, one, one second here. I'm trying to watch as we're coming up. Alrighty. So I think we're gonna go over cross our placement real quick and then this is tied into where we just sit here so like we're at 226 so we'll go talk about this and then we'll go back to that time marker 226 all right so cross our placement um are you familiar with that term yeah 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 so yeah. essentially we just want to make sure that you're constantly aiming um, head level, right? Crosshair placement is how you place your crosshair to hit better shots and easier shots. Um, when we're aiming at body level, that makes shots harder to hit because we have to adjust further up, further to the side, right? Um, whereas if we're already aiming head level, right? Always aiming head level, that means that we have less space to adjust, which means that the shot is therefore easier to hit because we have less adjustment space and it also means that all our spam shots are now instead of us peeking the corner and all these shots are hitting body shots we're now just all hitting head shots just because we're already aiming there right so um we're gonna see in the clip that we go back to that we kind of boost it up to the high ground and then we're aiming at the at kind of body level which can just mean that you're going to be hitting more head shots if we're aiming at head level um, same concept applies, right? We know that somebody's on the left, so we're aiming at head level and the left door. Oh, never mind. It's going to the right. Aiming head level, right doorway, a little bit away from the wall. That way, when he turns the corner, there's very little adjustment between now and when we get the kill, right? Very little. Okay. Okay. Same concept down here. They're a little bit downwards because they're on a slope, so not actually our head level or their head level. Okay, so aiming down a little bit. We turn this corner. Pretty much already aiming at at their head because it's very little adjustment. Because we already had a crosshair there. So if we take that same principle, right, and we go back and look at what we are working with on we Dorado, right? Yep. Traveling to Dorado. So if we go take a look at like what were we two twenty? I think. Yeah, two twenty six. Yep. So we look at when we're coming up here. So immediately looking, uh, we're gonna go in like half speed here something so look how we keep our crosshairs we're aiming at like kind of knees here right so that mm -hmm. just means that when we're going to hit these shots it's going to be uh, less accurate so kind of the whole time here we just want to make sure that we're aiming at the head level and then we're more likely to hit headshots off of that make sure when you need healing that you're requesting healing as that will tell your teammates where on the map you are right so um you know when a genji blades you hear where he is you because of the voice line so in the same way when you request healing the supports on your team know hey ash is behind me and she needs healing right so it's an in-game audio cue so if we're just not doing that then we're gonna get healing slower okay okay i like this angle that we're taking I asked him voice there. Mm -hmm. which I, I could I could have pressed X as well. Yeah, I I would recommend to basically, um, you only ask in voice if they're not if you press I need healing like five times and they're still not looking at you. Um, the reason why is because it, I need healing is just more efficient and talking voice can clutter comms if especially if other people are trying to talk, right? And then at the same time, if you say I need healing, they're like, who's I need healing? Where is I need healing? Right? Um, so. Pressing I need healing is just more efficient because it lets them know where and who, what character. Whereas you saying, hey, heal me, doesn't let them know where you are or who you are if you say I need healing, right? Or you could say Ash needs healing, but um, it's just a little bit more efficient. That makes sense. Let me handle it. Okay, I like the, that we're watching this angle. Okay. Um, let's see what, when we use Bob here, but all right, looks like we're probably not going to since we won. Yeah. Very nice. Come 
Okay, so um, with our left clicks, yes, it's when you're left clicking, it's a faster rate of fire, and therefore or you're doing kind of damage at a faster rate. But you also have to think about kind of um, your ammo. So when we're, yes, we're shooting at a faster rate, and therefore we're going to break a little bit faster, but we're also going to be burning through our ammo very, very, very fast. So um, it, a lot of times you're only going to be, if you're left clicking um, to burn something down fast so for example like um let's say like a wrecking ball right we can't headshot a wrecking ball like he's just rolling through our team we can left click him to burn him fast but in this situation when you don't have kind of a time restraint right ball's gonna try to run away here the shield's not going anywhere so we might as well just uh, uh kind of hard scope shoot at it as that's gonna mean that we're not gonna be burning through so much ammo so fast and we're not going to be having to reload for a solid like five seconds so here we probably would just be better off just shooting at it normally rather than trying to uh, like unscope shot it. Okay. Because it's more of a bang for your buck when it comes to damage. All right, gotta make sure that we're looking to use our ultimate um, kind of fast in these fights. So um, we don't want to hold on to ults because when we hold on to ults, they don't get value and we're gonna lose fights, and that means we could have maybe had two ults in the time that we used one ult. Um, let's see, I'm gonna see if like we hold on to it any longer than this, but um, the other thing is that when you use your ult early in fights, you get a few different things. First off, it's gonna mean that um, you are immediately getting the advantage and it means that you're more likely to win the fight and therefore you won't have a reason to hold on to your ultimate. Um, essentially, whoever uses their ults first gets the advantage. So let's compare like, um, for example, our ult versus BAP window. If they use window, then that means, before us, then that means that uh, they're going to get picks with it. They're going to do a ton of damage with it. They're, and then, therefore, they're going to be an, their team's going to be at an advantage and they're going to be winning the fight. They, maybe they didn't win it yet, but that means that if we use our Bob after that point, Bob is now going to get less value because Bob has less follow-up and you have less teammates alive to do so, to capitalize on Bob. So when we use our ultimates first, they get more value than if we use them second or if we hold on to them because if we hold on to them for too long, then we just end up losing the fight before we even get the chance to use it. So we just want to make sure that we're looking to use our ult a little bit faster in these fights as we did hold on to it for two. But then again, maybe you know we're, we might hold it using this like super early in this next one, so we'll keep an eye on it. Okay, so we do use Bob early here. That I like it. Um, let's see, how do we toss this? We're trying to get it in behind them, so I like the the placement with it. Um, was that we're trying to create a crossfire? So very very good Bob placement. Right. You always want to go for the crossfire effect, so they have to kind of choose: Do I turn around for Bob, or do I look at my look at their team? Yeah, it's unfortunate their team just used a ton of bolts. Right, just head level right as we're as we're aiming around that corner. Just make sure this is like kind of head level aiming. This is especially where crosshair placement becomes apparent. It can be used in the middle of fights, but it's also it's especially apparent when you're kind of uh, in the setup phase for a fight because that's where you have the most time to set it up. So we want to make sure that we're aiming at the head level, right? So we see McCree come around that corner. So when we're aiming here, we want to make sure that we're aiming at a head level, not staring at a wall. And then when we turn mm -hmm. over here. We kind of are a little too far down here, so looks like we actually were there to start, but then we kind of adjusted away from the head. Alrighty, got to be careful of um, standing up on these high grounds because we will have a bunch of people looking at us so we if we're 
hard scoping, we might end up getting sniped like we do here. So we just got to be careful that we're not um, we're not ever kind of sitting in the same place for too long on snipers. We always kind of want to be ready to be moving around. We don't want to be kind of chilling here, just sniping the entire time, because then that lets them know where we are. It makes the shots on us very easy. So we have to make sure that we're we're shooting, but we're also kind of doing some AD strafing in there. We're, we're moving around the high ground. We're not just kind of standing still in this little area, just doing this, right? Because that means mm -hmm. that it's very easy to know where we are. It's very easy to, um, to therefore kill us. So here we just kind of aren't, um, we're making it very easy for them to kill us because we're not paying attention to the people who are trying to kill us and then we're not trying to stay away from them. Alrighty. So, so far, after first round, kind of strengths and weaknesses, um, kind of take a look at those. Probably say that we have very good ability usage. I don't, I don't ever, we are using, oh, sorry, words, calm down. Um, <laughs> dynamite wise, I think that we're, we're doing very well. We hit very big dynamites and we use it off of cooldown. So I think we're good on that end. So we have good coach gun usage. I don't ever see you having a problem uh, understanding how to use it or, and you use it to get to good high grounds. So that is uh, good as well. Um, Bob usage, so ultimate usage, um, I would maybe, I'm going to have to take a look at more of them, but for now, the one Bob I saw us use was used uh, in the third fight after we got it, so mm -hmm. potentially looking to use it a little bit more often, but we did have good placement after we used it. Um, Mechanics-wise, um, it looks like you have some b decent mechanics naturally, and we're hitting a lot of shots. It's just that it's a lot of body shots, and therefore we're doing a lot less damage than we could be doing um, if we were hitting headshots, so crosshair placement will help you with that. Then on top of that, just making sure you're practicing on your mechanics and working towards it. Um, I'd probably say uh, maybe one of the bigger ones that we're looking at um, is going, and of course that that was a kind of a roll of a round, so hopefully we'll see more once it, once it gets a little bit more even, because you guys did cap with two and a half minutes. Um, but for now, it's looking like maybe kind of our positioning or game sense are going to be the ones that need a little bit more work or kind of our timing of when we were doing that. Um, especially on the first point, that was apparent with how we sh could have taken an off angle. Um, but so far we are, that was kind of a role. So we'll, we'll have to see how this, uh, how things work out in the defense here. All right. Okay, Cause may maybe we're just like in you know, a attack player. That's just kind of initial assessments of strengths and weaknesses. I heard Orion down there. Yeah, this was... Oh, you heard Orion? Uh, I, yeah, it was a ball, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you probably could have looked to use our dynamite at some point there. Just, you know, keep in mind that's going to be very, it's not just a spam ability, it's a very um, powerful tool in, in uh, duels and finishing off opponents, as it's very easy to land. But we did use it there. Alright, so, um, team comps have changed a bit slightly. Uh, they're now on a more divey team comp, right? And they have some char flanky characters that are going to be looking to get on top of us, so potentially we're going to want to hold on to um, our especially coach gun much more often and making sure we're not wasting that and then we have to be very ready for the dives to come on us um, maybe try to stick closer to your team and not too far off on our own because that could make us very easy to dive but let's take a look at what we're working with Okay. Um, unless you hear kind of footsteps, instead of going all the way over to check, just kind of do a quick scan behind you to see if you're kind of in an immediate danger, right? Um, if they're all the way down here, you're probably not going to be dying within the next two seconds, but um, you'll be most likely you'll be able to hear from some footsteps. So um, probably you don't need to go and actually check unless you have reason to. Um, so here we probably could have kept this kind of time on the front line. So just be careful that you're not wasting time like that. Okay. Okay, good shots, good headshots. Very nice. Oh, that's kind of nice. Nice work. Okay, all right. So you just got a bob. 
smooth sailing so far, but doesn't from the twenty minute marker I'm not gonna I'm gonna guess it's not <laughs> yeah. gonna stay that way. Yeah. Right, he's standing still a little too long. Um, it looks like we've been picked a couple times because of this. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's this is like the third time so far this game that we've died, specifically because we're kind of chilling in the same place for too long, letting people headshot us too easily, specifically the Zen here. Um, so get used to never standing still. You should be constantly looking to... Or let me check real quick. Do, do we do 80 strafes? Um... We, we need to be constantly kind of on the move and be strafing left and right. Um, Alright, so let's actually go over this because it doesn't look like we maybe have this down very well if we do have it down. Um, but basically, when you are looking to shoot at stuff, right, and we're just kind of sitting there shooting, what we want to be doing is... Um, AD strafing, so just going left, going right, right, just back and forth. So what this does is it just makes us a little bit of a harder uh, opponent to hit, right? When something's moving, it's a lot more difficult to hit than when it's standing still. Um, that's why get it, snipers are so easy to kill, is because you they're sp essentially standing still while they're scoped in, right? So when we're looking to shoot at stuff, we kind of want to be doing um, an AD strafe. If we're doing this too tight, where we're just pressing it back and forth really fast, then this doesn't really do much for us. As we're if you you know in comparison to this person right here, um, if this bot was staring at us, we're essentially standing still for them, right? Um, mm -hmm. Their cross are still on our head, even if we're if we're doing this. So, um, if we're doing it too long, that's going to mean that uh, we've now become very predictable and easy to hit, right? So, we want to find a nice little medium here to where we're just kind of going on the on each side of their head, um, and then we want to kind of be applying that. Um, you kind of get a nice little rhythm down, and um, essentially, you can get. Uh, once you get kind of used to it, it'll kind of be a natural thing for you, where you don't even really think much about it. Um, and you'll get very um, almost <laughs> unpredictable with it because when you don't really know what you're doing with it or you're not paying too much attention besides just making sure your crosshairs on top of them, right? Um, then it also becomes harder for the opponent to understand what you're going to do if you're not being predictable. So um, essentially just get used to moving around. You don't want to stand still for too long, right? If you're ever, I understand there's a, there's a tech behind standing still and, and doing dynamites, but unless that distance is very short, you're going to want to look to move around a little bit. So especially if you're looking to land a long range dynamite, um, rather than standing still for it, you want to um, move around, maybe keep your crosshair in the same place, and then we can dynamite once it gets there, right? We don't, or shoot it once it gets there, right? We can mm -hmm. keep our crosshair kind of in the same place without having, to, or while also moving around instead of standing still the whole time for it. Right. We just want to make sure that we're constantly on the move and we're not really ever, um, not AFKing, but not, not ever l standing still, right? Because standing still is where we get shot. There are a few times where you can stand still, so you can stand still if nobody knows where you are. So an example of this would be like if we just went on a flank or an off angle, right? We can take a second because nobody knows we're there and we can kind of stand still so we can line up a shot really well. Right, uh, especially our first or maybe our second, even our second shot. We can stand still if we have a bunch of shields in the way, but we again, you just have to be very careful because people can get behind shields and they can get through shields, and shields can break and shields can get dropped. So you just have to be careful about when we're doing that. Um, so there are a few times we just, especially you know, if if we know that they all know where we're at, right? Because we, we've been shooting, we've been in the same exact place for two minutes straight, and then all of a sudden we just you know AFK for a second here or don't move around while we're shooting then that's just mm -hmm. asking for the zingato to headshot us right so yeah this has been something that's happened three times so far so that's going to seem like it's a very consistent issue that's going to need to be worked on because three whole deaths that's a whole minute of time that you could have potentially cut out right mm -hmm. 10 10 seconds for a respawn um and then 10 seconds for a walk back from spawn means that now you're getting an extra if we cut out all those deaths we got an extra full minute of game time and not just extra full minute of game time doing whatever an extra full minute of game time in the middle of fights right mm -hmm. <laughs> all right so where were we before we were like right right around here 
Yeah, a little bit after here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, like kind of right now. Uh, right about now, right? Yeah. So you just kind of stand still for a second there. Yeah, and then we just get right clicked, right? So you just gotta mm -hmm. be careful though, standing still. Right, at that point the fight was lost, but it was kind of um, the catalyst of the loss was the fact that we got picked first, right? So that was our impact on the loss there. So hopefully gonna be looking to use our ults in this next fight. He probably looked at contest this, especially if he went for a Bob, as we do have the majority of our team here, five players, right? We were only down one person. So we can probably look to Bob to contest point. Okay, I think we... Never mind, I, I, I missed a tire. I, down, down. Now I'd be hesitant about it because we're down two people. Okay, uh, do. good decision. I die here. Alright. Um pay attention to your team and how they're respawning. So when you're down two people like that, um that means that they have the advantage and they're gonna be looking to press that advantage and get aggressive on you. Um in this situation we need to be waiting for our players to get back. So we can't be in too aggressive positioning. Um here we get up to the high ground, but we can't stay here for long. Um that's an impressive little swing around by the ball. Um <laughs> Yeah, so we gotta just make sure we're not chilling here for too long as we, the, our team, whole team is backing up, right? If we look at where the rest of our team is, they're all back here. Um, yeah. So us being on this forward high ground is just a little bit too of an aggressive forward position. So gotta pay attention to what's up with our team. Looks like just a lot of unnecessary deaths that are happening that just end up kind of staggering and staggering and staggering. I mean, that we keep uh, losing these fights over and over again. Alrighty, so this is now the, um, I believe, so we had, we got Bob, we had it for one, two, okay, so this is like the, th the third fight that we've held on to it again, right, so again, kind of same concept as before, look to use it early in the fight, not after they used, used Bomb, because by the time they use Bomb, you've lost, now lost the fight, um, look to use it, like, pretty much, you're looking to use your ultimate, anytime that you get it, unless you're, when you you won the fight or unless you lost the fight now you can look to hold on to it a little bit more if you feel like um if you have a plan going in place right if you if your team or you decide to say hey let's only use these ultimates or you don't want to overall but besides those like for now you can get a little bit more advanced with it later but for now um, you're pretty much just going to use it as soon as you get it because you, you want the advantage that it gives you and if you're using it at the first fight you got it rather than this fight you get two bobs by now which means that so far in this game we would have had four bobs rather than two bobs right yeah it makes sense So looking to salt point out with Bob. How did Bob fly like that? Who knows? Especially when you're at a range, it's going to be very difficult to finish off targets with your left click as 
Um, it gets very inaccurate at ranges, so you might as well just stay scoped a lot of the time. If something's right next to you, then that becomes all, or at a kind of a mid range, then that left click strat j does become a little bit more applicable. But at the range of the Zenyatta set, probably not going to go for it, um, as it's not going to be very an accurate shot, and it's just going to be, you know, hitting straight on if we're scoping in, because you do have a spread when it comes to your left click, okay, or your unscoped left click. So the only time you should be looking to use left click, you have, you have two times you're looking to use left click, um, or three kind of. Um, so number one, if something's right on top of you in your face, you've done good with that, right? Because they're when they're on top of us, we don't want to be scoping in. Um, when something when we're finishing off a target and they're very low HP, but not usually at a range. Um, and then three is if we're trying to burn something very fast, like the ball, for example. I think we've been doing a good job with that, but. When you're just kind of shooting down a corridor like this, this is where you're just using regular pri like scoped in shots. There's no reason to be looking to left click here. Um, this isn't going to do much here. It's just going to be inaccurate at a range. You're going to be missing some shots. Like, uh, let's see, I think we missed one of those just because it was of the spread. So if we count how many sh we shot, right? We one, two, three. Okay, so, so we, mi we missed the first shot even though we had it pretty much on top of them, right? That's just because of the spread. Um, so not going to be something you're wanting to do from that range, especially when they're full HP, right? That's not really going to do much. Yeah. Okay, when you're tossing Bob in, um, we, I talked about this in the first fight, but here we don't do it. Um, look to create a crossfire effect. So that means that w our team is shooting at them from this direction. This is kind of what an off angle does for you, right? Our team is shooting at this from the, uh, uh, sorry, our team is shooting at them from this direction. Bob, if we threw Bob, for example, here, that'd be really good. Um, now Bob is shooting them from this direction, right? Um, now that means that they're getting caught, shot at from both directions. They don't have anywhere that they can go where they're behind cover. And this also splits their attention to where now they're going, huh, who do we shoot at? Team or Bob, right? If they shoot at Bob, then that means team gets free reign. If they shoot at team, Bob gets free reign, right? So this puts them in a predicament. Most of the time that you throw Bob, this that unless you're trying to like stall cart or something like that, um, you're going to be looking to create this crossfire effect. And us throwing it right, plopping it right here in the front, means that we're not creating a crossfire effect. We're essentially getting the same exact angle as our team. So that means that um, if they try to run away, they're running away and they get around the corner and now Bob can't see them. So we're not creating any crossfire effect, which means that Bob is going to get burned easier. It means that he's not going to get as much value and he's not going to get a crossfire going. And he gets okay. slapped like that. Yeah. Right, there's another thing to watch out for is that when you're looking to throw Bob is pay try to pay attention to the Ana sleep as we can try to pay, if we're paying attention to Ana or we're listening for it or we see someone on our team that slept now we know uh, that they don't have sleep and then that can allow us to get away with um, Bob for free rather than looking to uh, use it and then getting half of his ultimate cancelled like uh, for example let's see does, does she ever use it up leading into this fight doesn't look like it actually we all held on to it the whole time so we actually wouldn't have been able to do any, wouldn't have been able to go. But yeah, if you, if they don't ever use it, it's better to just throw the bob. But um, you can always try to at least wait a couple of seconds and see if they look to use sleep. Okay. Yeah, good coach gun usage again. Kind of using it to get away from the Genji.
All right. Um, kind of another instance where we're kind of out in the open. Look to stand a little bit further away from the uh, from the edge here. So. If we look at our kind of perspective here, there's a lot can, that can see us. If we stand a little bit further back, that means that there's less and less that's able to see us. Like if we're standing on this angle, for example, right, only Zen can see us here, which means that he has a lot less of our body to hit because he can only really hit our head, um, right, rather than our entire body, which gives him less things to shoot at. Um, other thing this does is it just means that we, are, we have even less time before we're behind cover and they can't shoot at us. So look to use the high ground a little bit more appropriately. Um, so, you know, another a good example of using this is, like, you know, if we're standing here and let's say, oh, snap, there's not even anyone here. But if, if their whole team is scattered around here, right, and we're mm -hmm. peaking this high ground, um, their whole team is able to, to see us. And can we shoot at five, six people at once? Mm -mm. Can five or six people at once shoot at us? Yeah. Yeah, so us standing like out in the open where they can all shoot at us means that we're going to be taking a lot of extra damage. So look to stand a lot further away from the edge, especially, you know, you can peek if you're looking for dynamite, you can peek if you're um, looking to just see where, what everyone's up to or looking where they're at, but we don't want to peek for long if we're doing that. Um, here against the Zenyatta, Zenyatta knows where we are. We've got to make sure that we're not, that we're paying attention to him. He is our biggest threat right now, right? Um, he's the one who's killed us the most. Oh, you, you also, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, you're down. I didn't even notice the way you had a lever. Um, yeah, they left for a second. They came right back. All right. <laughs> it was the Mercy. So, Zenyatta is the one that's killed us the most. It wasn't the Genji. It wasn't the, you know, the Ball or the, the Diva. Zenyatta has killed us almost every single time that we've died. Um, mm -hmm. We got to be aware of him and make sure we're paying attention to him and make sure that we're not... Um, that we're kind of trying to focus him first of all here so that we can, um, you know, unless we're getting contested by Ball, Diva, or... Genji, we're trying to focus the, the the Zenyatta because he's the thing that's very easy to kill. He's the thing that we're probably gonna have. Who's gonna be able to contest us the easiest at a range? So we just continuously end up dying to the Zenyatta over and over again. Just use positioning a little bit better. Pay attention to the fact that he is a, da a threat and a, probably one of your biggest uh, dangers out there. So we have to look to stay away from him and well, unfortunate. Look to open it up with a dynamite. We're throwing down on my look to, especially when they have a Reinhardt, even if he doesn't have his shield up currently, he's going to be putting it up if he sees it coming, or if he's, you know, in this situation where he's half in purple, he's going to be putting his shield up, so we look to toss it above shield or above his kind of head, even if he doesn't have shield um, currently up, because otherwise it just bounces off and then you don't get any value. All right, there we just kind of got really aggressive and then kind of paid the price. Um, pay attention to positioning again. Make sure we're not standing on the open as we're kind of, you know, from May's perspective, we're just kind of dancing in a place that's very easy for everyone to shoot at us from, right? So in this situation, we kind of tunnel vision on killing the May. That puts us in a easy place for us to die. And then we're just kind of out in the open and we end up dying, right? So don't suicide to get any kills, right? Going one for one is a very terrible thing to do as a DPS. Is you know, one one KD is very bad on a DPS character. Um, yeah. You know, you're not going to be doing much if you're just getting one kill every single time. So we can't suicide to get kills. So don't throw yourself in bad situations to get them. 
um, especially on the open, right? Good positioning is the usage of cover. Bad positioning is the absence of cover. So we got to make sure that we're staying next to cover and we're not going too far out in the open. All right. Okay. Yeah, just I haven't seen a whole lot of headshots in this game, so you just gotta make sure that we're looking to prioritize headshots, aim head level, make sure we're keeping crosshair placement in mind, and then hopefully we'll be hitting more heads, right? Because, you know, pay attention to crosshair here. Or look, we're looking for flashbang, but still, like, right, if we're just comparing where our crosshairs at in comparison to the bodies, like, while we're, while we're fighting here, it just is constantly a little bit lower than it should be. Okay. Very nice. When you're in the middle of shooting something, there's no reason to reload. Um, if you still have ammo left, right? If you still have two shots and you're still trying to shoot a Lucio, don't reload. Keep shooting. Um, you only reload if you if you run out of ammo. Because there's no reason to reload in that situation. It here we. Oh, where, where are we? So we shooting at this Lucio. Here we kind of put ourselves in a poor pit situation. Uh, don't run. First off, don't run straight at a junk rat, right? That's a little bit of a dangerous thing to do. Try to keep your distance. Think of the kind of your matchup there. Junk rat's a close range character. You're a long range character. He has a little bit better at that range than you do, so don't run straight at him. Um, and then we also kind of keep walking to where now we're kind of out in the open again, right? Um, away from our whole team. This is just very dangerous for us in our position. Um, Keep in mind, again, right, what we were talking about before, good positioning is the usage of cover, bad positioning is the absence of cover. So, for example, we're standing right here, right, and the enemy team is shooting at us, their whole enemy team is there, and when they start shooting at us, it takes us, like, one, two, three seconds to get behind cover. Now, in that time it took us to get here, we died because we were out in the open, and we were, that meant that they were very easily able to shoot at us, but... If we're holding next to cover here and they start shooting at us, it takes us half a second to duck behind cover. And therefore, we have much more survivability here. We're going to be able to stay alive longer, right? And there's a bunch of different types of cover. We have corners, which are a big major one. We have just random objects along the way. Cart can be used as cover. Kind of pillars that you can find around like this. Doorways, high grounds, right? There's a bunch of different usage of uh, kind of covers that you can use here we're not using cover we're just kind of chilling on the open and we walk out into the open and then that means that we're just in a very dangerous position Okay, good iron high noon. All right, so let's see. We have like twelve minutes left, so we can look to go ahead and get into that other replay and then we can look to after a couple minutes we'll go cut out and then do a wrap up okay all right
traveling to Hanamura, ready for battle. All right. Ready for battle. We're playing soldier here. Mm -hmm. Won't hold together. I require healing. Right, so just already, and um, this is just kind of comes in. Soldier's a little bit more spammy in just his shooting than Ash is because he has more shots to shoot. Um, so when we're spamming in here, right, and Reinhardt drops shield for right, like exactly the second. Um, mm -hmm. If we're aiming at his feet, these shots are hitting bodies. If we're aiming at his head, these shots hit head, right? So when we're just aiming at head level, all these shots are now. All these spam shots that we're shooting at shields down a corridor, all these shots are now just hitting headshots much more often, and we're doing a lot, whole lot of more damage. When we're doing more damage, we get more ultimates. When we get more ultimates, we're um, able to win more fights and therefore win more games. And then when we're getting more kills, we're able to, or when we're getting more damage, we're getting more kills as well. And when we're getting more kills, we're winning fights, and then when we're winning games, right? So headshots just are going to mean that you're doing a whole lot more. And here we're just, you can kind of see that we're constantly aiming at the body. Kind of, kind of the whole time here that we're that we're looking in, right? Yeah. Very nice. Alrighty. Um, here we need to look to try to get in and on an off angle as fast as possible. Um, soldier is not a very good just front sit front line shoot character because there's other characters that do better than soldier at that um they, they have more shield break and do more damage if you're just shooting and at, at characters on the front line um so we want to make sure that we're going on flanks and because soldier has the what makes soldier good is he's very versatile and he's very decent on off angles and flank angles as he has his sprint that he can get there fast he has his health back, which allows him to survive on his own, and he can burst things down fast with his helix. So we want to make sure that we're when, as soon as our team makes some headway through the choke here, that we're running off to the right, um, getting taking high ground or going kind of on the right side here, or if we get far enough in there, we can take top left or something like that. Um, and then one of the reasons why soldier might not be maybe I think. Ash might be a little bit better than Soldier on an attack like this is because Soldier wants those those off angles and Ash doesn't need them as much because Ash can get dynamite damage in. She can, um, for example, uh, use her coach gun and get up into the window, use her coach gun. I don't know actually if she can reach this, but maybe get up here on the high ground and we can take these different angles from choke point. Um, but Soldier can't do that and therefore... As soldier, if we're just chilling at choke, we might be better off on a different character. But we're gonna do our best to kind of with our play style is get off on the the flank as fast as possible. Okay. Okay. Look to push in past choke when your team's pushing in past choke. Don't sit here and just uh, in the bad positioning. We want to take some better positioning when a when our team's creating space for us. So. Run into the right, run into the left, take a high ground. Um, we don't want to just sit here spamming at tanks. Um, other thing we're going to talk about is target priority. So, um, when we, as DPS, we want to be actively seeking out supports and other DPS. As supports and other DPS, first off, have they have flat out more statistical raw output than tanks do. DPS do the damage and supports do healing. Tanks are exist to create space for supports in DPS. Now the tanks do also have the you know highest carrying uh, potential in the game, um, but that doesn't mean that you, we should be looking to focus them. Um, tanks also have two to three times the health of other characters, and they have tanking abilities like shields and bubbles and whatnot. Um, so therefore, we're gonna have an easier job killing supports in DPS. Uh, supports can also pocket tanks easier than they can pocket each other so a bap and an ana can't heal themselves very well so they're only really being pocketed by one person but they can both full out pocket a reinhardt for example so um in 
we whenever given equal opportunity or we're given the opportunity to flank and get behind shields and get behind tanks we want to look to go for dps and supports um there are situations though where we do shoot at tanks like for example when the tanks are the only thing that we can shoot at where which is the case when we're looking to get past choke right when our team's sitting at choke here and the tanks are on the front line they're the only thing that we could possibly shoot at so in that situation we shoot at tanks when tanks are low, we shoot at them. When tanks are out of position, we shoot at them. But when we have a very good opportunity for the past like 10, 15 seconds here where our team's pushed in and we could very easily go on a flank angle here and kill the McCree or somebody on or support or a DPS on the right here. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want to just sit at choke spamming down the Reinhardt who's nanoed and being pocketed, right? When we could be looking to kill a, another character that might have uh, little, be a little bit easier to kill with a higher impact. Okay. Right, and then the McCree go, do, goes and does that, and then now he's bypassed your tanks, gotten a kill, because you're much easier to kill than your Reinhardt is. And then now he's gotten value out of that. Now he does end up dying a second later, but he he looked to get good value, and like that that's the value that he you should be looking to get. Okay. This old dog's learned a few tricks. All right, so why don't we do a wrap up now? So, okay. um, just kind of go over all the kind of points again, review them, and then go over the main points. So, um, dynamite usage very decent. Make sure you're not standing still at all, but then as even while you're in dynamite, because that's the time where you're most kind of tempted to stand still because of how e easy it is to hit while you're standing still. Just make sure, especially when it's at longer ranges that we're not standing still. Um, but overall, good timing with your dynamites, good dynamite usage. Um, coach gun, good usage. Just make sure that when they have some divey characters or flankers, they're holding on to it more often, but we did use it to get to high grounds a lot, and I liked that. Um... Oh. Now, ultimate usage um, needs a little bit of work. One with the uh, timing and how often we're using it. So make sure we're not holding on to it, but we're using it very frequently. And then with timing, make sure you're looking to use it at the beginning of fights. And then with your placement on Bob, make sure that you're looking to um, place it on a crossfire from the for the enemy team. Unless you're looking to just throw them out to stall point, you're looking to get them to kind of be taking a an opposite angle from your team so that he can shoot at them from the back or the side. Um, so that does need a little bit of work. Now, when it comes to just raw mechanics, I think you're decent, pretty decent. We just need to be hitting a lot more headshots because headshots obviously just do a ton more, right? It's like one, two, three versus one, two, three, four, five, right? It's going to be almost double the amount of shots right even at this at distance you kind of get that effect a little bit more one two three four oh and this is how inaccurate uh you know <laughs> doing that at a distance is right that this is why you don't do this at a distance is because you're not likely to hit the shot especially when you're doing this at, at a rapid fire um because it needs some time to reset so it's it's not going to be very accurate at a distance right because because sometimes we have it directly on their head and it's just flat out misses um now, yeah, so just make sure we're aiming head level. Make sure that we're putting our crosshair where we know people are going to be. Um, so that we can hit more headshots rather than just continuously hitting body shots. Um, now, positioning. Make sure you're taking some off angles, right? So different angle from your team. Kind of the same uh, idea as your Bob, right? We're trying to get a crossfire effect. So if our team is standing there or holding here and their enemy team's there, we can look at the comment to the left room, throw dynamite, or get some value from the side. If our team's standing here and enemy team's standing there, we can look to go stairs or just boost up high ground. Now we've gotten a different angle where we're getting, kind of like we are talking about soldier, we're getting behind shields, we're getting behind their tanks, we're getting going for the right targets, the, tar the easier targets to kill, right? So we can focus the supports and the DPS very easily from up here. We have good survivability from up here. Um, so look to take high grounds a lot. Um, positioning as well, make sure that you're looking to play next to cover and not on the open and we're not walking out into the open and we're looking to play next to corners and objects that can block damage so that we don't die as easily. Um, gotta make sure we're not standing still so that's resulting in a lot of our deaths and we're continuously, we, if we cut out those times where we're standing still and we're instead strafing back and forth even while we're scoping in, then that means that um, we're going to be alive more often and we're gonna be able to do more. Um, now, let's see what else is there. 
Soldier, you just look to go on flank. Like, Ash, you're looking to go on off angles. Soldier, you can go. Uh, the difference between an off angle and a flank is that flanks uh, take longer to go on, and a lot of the times are a little bit more dangerous. Um, oh, Ash can't go on flanks because she'd be too too slow on them, and she uh, also on top of that she doesn't have any survivability. But Soldier can go on a flank a little bit more. A um, little bit more. Uh, th these are off angles, right? A flank would be if we decided to go all the way around. Right, all the way around, right, and take something like this, right, or even something like this, right, um, where this took a lot longer, but on Soldier, that time's cut in half because of our sprint. Um, usually, it's pretty dangerous, and yeah, that was dangerous, but we can survive a lot easier because we have the the health pack, and we also have sprint to get away. So, Soldier, you can be a little bit more flanky than, it, than Ash can, um, but you also still want to go for off angles as often as possible. Um, Cree, kind of same concept. Doesn't not want to go on flanks too much, but you want to go on off angles. Um, then I didn't see too much of a problem with uh, with McCree and Soldier. I would have needed to see more gameplay to talk about ultimates or uh, ability usage. Um, so that is pretty much it. I think we had a good grasp on when we were winning and losing fights, and we didn't kind of overall, and we weren't trying staggering ourselves or staying in too long. Or walking in with our outer team, so I think we had pretty good grasp on that. And our general awareness of what was going on around us was pretty decent. Um, if I were to put a, let's see, one, two, like kind of a priority list of like what to work on first here. Um, probably say um, her ultimates or mechanics. Um, ultimate, so probably say the, the three main things are ultimates, mechanics, and positioning. Um, and then we'll put in with positioning, we'll throw like the standing still thing, just so just like survivability in general. Um, okay. I probably say that. Oof. Um, mechanics we'll put at number three because though that is a very important thing to be doing more damage. I think that we also do get kills pretty consistently, and we're not doing terribly mechanics wise. You just need to hit more headshots. Um, so though it is an important topic, I also don't think it's the the biggest thing uh, that we need to work on. Um, probably going to put, so it's positioning and then ultimate usage, probably put positioning as your number one and ultimate usage as your number two. Look to use your ults more often, right? Positioning and survivability of standing still, right? Make sure you're not in bad positions and you're putting yourselves on off angles as well as making sure you're not standing still so that you don't end up dying. Um, so those are kind of the top three things that you're probably going to want to look to work on. Do you okay. have any questions about anything that we've gone over? Um... No, I don't think so. Um, actually, maybe with positioning, is it just like, like, is there anything besides like looking for cover and you know the AD spam, um, that I should specifically work on besides like that? Um, so high ground usage, just make sure you're going the high grounds, you know, as often as possible, and you're looking to take it away from enemy team, uh, team two, right? Um, besides that, I think positioning there wasn't too much more it was just that a lot of the times we ended up getting caught out for those two things specifically um and we ended up dying because of it um so gotta make sure that we're not doing that and we're not getting caught caught out so we're not dying continuously over and over again because you know, when you're not dying you just do more flat out right mm -hmm. so that's the main point there are some more advanced parts to positioning but i don't think that that's anything that we currently you know struggle with too much and there's some other stuff that we can go about, but uh, it'd be like more tanking type of deal that it's really important on. So it's, I typically don't even go much over it with other roles than tanks. Okay. Alrighty. So and All right. any other questions? No, I don't think so. Alrighty. So I'm going to end the recording here then.